Lawmakers now take us right up to the edge of that fiscal cliff. This evening, three days to go now before taxes go up for all Americans. Will the president's pressure on Congress in these last 24 hours bring a deal? Let's bring in ABC's chief White House correspondent, John Carl, with us again tonight on this. John, are they any closer? A little closer, David, but you are certainly not there yet. Tonight, congressional meet leaders are making one last ditch effort to try to keep most Americans from waking up to a big tax hike on New Year's Day. With just three days left, finally a glimmer of hope. I'm hopeful and optimistic. Whatever we come up with is going to be imperfect, and some people aren't going to like it. Right now, it is some all in the hands of the two like Senate it, yes. leaders. Democrat Harry Reid and Republican Mitch McConnell. They are working on a mini deal that would prevent a tax increase for roughly 98% of American workers, extend unemployment benefits that are set to expire for some 2 million people, and prevent a huge cut in payments to Medicare doctors. What took so long? The American people are watching what we do here. Uh, obviously, their patience is already thin. This is deja vu all over again. The 11th hour effort to get a deal comes after the president met with the congressional leadership Friday at the White House. It was his first six such years. meeting in six weeks. Even if McConnell and Reid come to agreement, there. there is no guarantee the it will pass hours. before the end of the year. The agreement represents what the president calls the bare minimum, extending tax cuts while doing nothing to curb spending or address the long-term deficit crisis. If they fail to even pass a mini deal, virtually everybody's income taxes will go up. The average family paying an extra $3,446 a year. And even if the income tax cuts are extended, virtually all workers are due to see less in their paychecks starting in January, when the temporary 2% payroll tax cut is set to expire. And don't assume there will even be a mini deal. A Democratic source familiar with talks that are going on tonight tells me the prospects are, quote, not too promising that they will come to a bipartisan agreement in time to keep everybody's taxes from going up. David. Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, tonight. John, our thanks to you. And of course, this waiting game already affecting Americans' 401ks. The stock market, five straight days of losses. And so let's bring in GMA weekend anchor, Biana Goladriga, who also covers the economy for us. Biana, great to see you. And if these lawmakers thought that waiting until the 11th hour wouldn't have an effect, look no further than the stock market. That's right. Take a look at what happened just the past few days. On Friday, the Dow lost 158 points for the week, down 252 points. And David, these aren't just numbers we're talking about. It's real money. The average 401k loss anywhere between three to four thousand dollars this week and December is traditionally a good month for the stock market. Also a good month for housing. We have these new numbers showing existing sales up nearly 10 percent over this time last year. But here's what the president had to say about that. He fired off a warning shot here. America wonders why it is that in this town for some reason you can't get stuff done in an organized t timetable. Why everything always has to wait till the last minute. Well we're now at the last minute. The economy's growing. The housing market is recovering, but that could be impacted if folks are seeing smaller paychecks. And so, Biana, what about that momentum in the housing market? Is that at risk, too? It definitely is, and it's not just home sales. Home prices have gone up as well. Take a look at a battered state like Arizona. Home prices went up 21 percent over the last year, and even other states across the country saw moderate gains as well. All of that is at play right now if Washington doesn't come up with a solution.